And welcome to yet another Power On Podcast Portable. How are y'all doing out there? I am Sushi B, and with me as always is the venerable Taylor. How you doing, Taylor? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking how much stuff. Uh, not too bad. Feeling better. So uh, really excited for another episode, and I think we've got a, a nice one rounded out here for it. Are you ready for it? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are going in with a very... Very well loved and cherished series, and this is the sort of the curtain call. I would, I don't know. I guess I would say it's the curtain call, anyways. The swan song of the traditional series, yeah, the swan song of the traditional series, and we are referring to Fantasy Star Four: The End of the Millennium. Heck yeah! Yeah, so we decided to go a little further back with the ye old Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, however you like to call it. And bust out one of the most popular and famous RPGs on the system. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a game that I experienced quite a bit. Maybe not quite, quite a bit after, but at least a four or five year span after it had come out, I finally got a chance to play. It. A a kid at school lent it to me because I was a poor kid who couldn't get any games, and I had a Genesis uh, around two thousand or so. And uh, I got my hands on a, on the game, and I, I just devoured it. I ripped through the game probably in maybe four or five days, which was a, was pretty fast for me at the time. <laughs> uh, but I loved it. I loved every minute of the game, and uh, it was nice to go back and play it again. How about you? I it's been a long time since I've played it. I it's I want to say I first played it in ninety. Six or so, because that was what, like, about a year or so after it came out. I think, I think it came out in 1994. I thought it came out in 95. Maybe. Well, somewhere in that in that neighborhood for sure. So yeah, it because it, it it took a while to get from Japan to America, but um, or yeah, North America. Right. But yeah, I, I want either 96 or 97. So it's been 15 years. So oh, wow. So a very long time. Yeah, so it was nice to kind of come back to it, and I I guess play a game that I really enjoyed as a kid and play it again as an adult, which, I mean, I've kind of done that with a couple other games, and my outlook of the game has either stayed very positive, or it's changed from negative to positive, or, I mean, it's gone a whole bunch of ways. Usually, it doesn't stay very bad, unless yeah. it's a movie, <laughs> but <laughs> besides <laughs> that, um, I usually, I, I tend to enjoy it more coming back to it after such a long time of not playing it, so. Right. But uh, I mean, I still love it. It's been star. Cool. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I played it uh, after beating it that one time. I I did get around to getting my own copy maybe in the early ish two thousands. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get a complete copy. Nice. Uh, the manual in good shape and stuff. And uh, I, I remember beating it again then. And this is the first time I played it in almost ten years as well since then. So yeah, it was really really awesome to get a chance to play it again. And we both played this on the PS3, the Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, or whatever it's called. Uh, the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection. Sure, Sega Mega Drive. So we played it on that, but we both have experienced it on the Genesis as well. There is no change. It is the exact same game on this disc. So uh, that was actually nice. I, I was glad that there was no changes at all to it. It was just the straight-up original game. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice, and I do apologize if you hear fireworks in the background. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Somebody uh, really likes Fantasy Star 4. Yeah, exactly. Much jubilee celebration abound here. But yeah. um, no, it, it's definitely nice to actually be able to play the original version. I would kind of thought it would have been cool if they would have also, even though it wouldn't have made sense since it is the Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, to kind of include at least maybe, I don't know, kind of a preview of how generations looked, but then I remembered it never made it outside of Japan, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I, th I think so. I think you're right. It would be kind of worthless to... <laughs> this is something you never got! <laughs> well, people probably would have bought into it, though, thinking that it would have been a nice addition, as you said. People would have really appreciated adding that, but I'm sure they probably didn't have maybe disk space for all that, or, or it just didn't even occur to them, because it hadn't been translated. They just didn't even bother with it. Right. So, oh well. But yeah. But anyways, that's beside the point. We are talking about Fantasy Star Four, and why don't we get right into it? Right into it. Yeah. 
So why don't we dip uh, straight into the story? Okay. I think that's traditionally the best place to start. And this story is very unique in that it, for me at least, it really perfectly wrapped up the Fantasy Star series to this point. It does a, a very good job of cleaning up a lot of the loose ends. Of course, there's always going to be something that's still open that people want to interpret and, and maybe believe that they could continue the story, but it fixes its position in the series so well that it doesn't really need another game in this traditional series if Sega ever wanted to make more Fantasy Star games this way. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There's really, it, it definitely kind of ties up as much as it can with particularly more so one, one and two yeah. than with three, but um, that's reasons won't get into. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I think, I guess you, technically you could go back to it and kind of, you know, maybe do something in between or something, but mm -hmm. why? Yeah, that's a good question. It is a big question of why. Why do you need to? I mean, there, I, that's kind of what sometimes gets to me with certain game series is that they drag it out. Eventually, it's got to end. The story has got to end at some point. I mean, eh, please. Just, <laughs> and, this is, it, and this is great. There's four games in it. It's not like your typical trilogy. There's four, even though you can kind of throw out one to make it three. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, I really liked how they wrapped everything in this nice, wonderful package called Fantasy Star. Yeah, and they really went out with a bang in the sense that they pushed the Genesis as hard as they could when it came to graphical capabilities. Maybe not so much when it in the sense of the overworld and stuff, but definitely in the battle sequences and in the cutscenes. There's a lot of uh, memory being used up just for that. And I think I read that this was meant to be a Sega CD game before, originally. I believe that's uh, that's what I've heard as well, that it was rumored to have been, well, maybe not rumored, but it was possibly set for that, but they toned it back yeah. so that uh, actually more people would be able to play it. <laughs> guess, well, would, yeah. would buy it because, yeah, not that many people were buying into the Sega CD, so... <laughs> So. But a lot of the cutscenes do feel like something that would have been on the Sega CD, which is I, pretty impressive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. The cutscenes are pretty cool in it. Um, what did What did you personally think of the progression of the story itself uh, and whatnot? So. It's pretty, pretty basic. It's, it's not gonna rock your world by any means. It's it's a lot of almost fetch questing of here's our mission. We need to get this item to continue on to the next part of the mission, kind of thing. There's, it's very straightforward. It's a lot of the character elements that they bring in regarding old characters from the previous first two games, anyways, mm -hmm. that really at least give the story a little bit more balance and something worth caring about. I could, I could definitely agree with that. I think if if you were to sit there and just straight up play four, you might like it, mm -hmm. but. It, Without playing one and two, uh, it really kind of takes away from the, I guess, just the, the love of the game itself and the story. Right. Uh, that is some massive fireworks. Is, they're like right next to my house. So <laughs> I can actually see it. It looks. Like... <laughs> Shut up! To me. Happy birthday to me. But anyways, yeah, it's, it's like a western shootout out there. <laughs> we should have been talking about gun smoke or something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anywho, um, yeah, the progression itself definitely would have to agree with you. It's more kind of God and mighty <laughs> end of the world. But um, it, it's definitely very kind of fetch quest heavy. Like the, you can kind of break it down into I wouldn't say thirds. Yeah. But it, it's kind of like the first two. I, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, it is kind of in thirds. The first two thirds are rather lengthy. However, the last third is very abrupt. I would say it's very quick. The dungeons are very quick. It, it just you're just like ta 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 ta. Okay, done. Yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. I I mean, you could argue that a lot of the game is that way, anyways. Um, it's not a long game. It's really not. Maybe what fifteen hours or so. Uh, more 20, 20, 20 well 15 to 20 you can probably finish this game well i mean if you if i'm just trying to think if you've never played it before yeah <laughs> 20 to 25 i, I would say would probably be a good okay. 
Because you might, uh, so, something we'll probably get into a little bit later is that certain boss fights. Yeah. So. But as a whole, I, I've always felt this game was very quick, and you the pacing is just, okay, do this and do this and do this and do this, and then the game is suddenly over. And you don't really have a lot of, there are side quests you can do and stuff, but they don't really detract so far that you're stuck in the game for a long time. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the story is what it is. It's a, it's a nice wrap-up for fans that previously liked 1 and 2. And I think even if you don't know much about Fantasy Star, you can probably still enjoy parts of the story, but you might be a little hard-pressed to be really wowed by it. That's, that's definitely for sure. <laughs> so many fireworks. <laughs> Every time you try to talk, you can hear fireworks burst <laughs> off in the background. That's how exciting it is over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so. No, I, I agree with that. But I would definitely say that playing one and two uh, naturally just kind of really make the experience even much more wholesome. Yeah, or even just cheat and kind of get at least a bit of backstory and read about one and two. <laughs> it, it, it would certainly help a lot with four. So. Right. But yeah, I guess, I guess um, what do you want to go into next? Kind of the, I guess, the battle system? You want to kind of brush up on that one real quick? Uh, sure, we can do that. Okay, well, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty it's pretty typical uh, for the battle system. It's turn-based and whatnot. However, uh, what's really cool is that not only do you get five awesome characters, which the grouping, if you're not used to it, might be kind of goofy. Because mm -hmm. your first, the first character is in the center, and then it's off to left, se left to center, right of center, and then the left edge, and then right edge. Right. And if you're not kind of used to that, it's kind of a weird formation. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. But um, the, it's just kind of your typical turn base love fest. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really too horribly much that's unique about it outside of the combination spells, which are awesome, yes. however, are rare sometimes. If yeah. you, you can't, if you're, because they don't tell you, they're not like, hey, combining somebody using certain skills to, at, at the same time, will produce this awesome skill of sweetness. It, yeah. It's more of, you kind of just have to just get lucky sometimes. And be like, oh god, I gotta find how to do that again. Right. And, and the problem with that is that the game has, each character's speed is different, so the computer can adjust that at any time that it feels like it. So even if you do the proper skills and you think that those characters are in order, sometimes it still doesn't work because the computer just decides, well, no, you're going to attack, then the computer's going to attack you, and then that other character will attack as well. Negation. Yeah, so sometimes that can be a little bit frustrating if you're in trouble and you just want to bust out one of these special moves. And you just can't do it sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed to, in the latter half of the game, it didn't seem to be too much of an issue when you're trying to do, in particular, Grand Cross. Grand Cross, no. Not <laughs> not too bad. But some of the other ones, you have to really perfectly set it up. Right. So, at that point, it's just Grand Cross and go. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. Because like, there, there's not really too horribly... The, probably the thing that gets to me a little bit... Uh, are the items. Some of the items aren't really explained. You have to use them. Mm -hmm. And then when you use them, if you're new to the game or the series and stuff, you are you might be kind of confused. Like the dews. Yeah. The star dew, the moon dew, and the sun dew. Right. I think. And you try to use those, but they don't, don't explain what they are. Mm -hmm. So if you find them and use them, you're just kind of like, okay, I have no idea what this <laughs> is. And, but then you find a shop later on that sells these things for exorbitant amount of money. Right. <laughs> but it's just, I wish they would have kind of spent a little bit more time explaining some of the items a bit more. So if somebody who is new to the game or the series in general I would have a better idea. I mean, you could say that about the magical spells and stuff too, though, right? I right. Mean, you look at the name and maybe you can guess, well, that could be a fire spell and that could mm -hmm. be a water spell. But... It's because I, I hadn't played the game in a long time as well. I forgot that a lot of the names were different than just fire or water. And at first, I don't typically use magic that much, anyways. But there are some parts where you want to use some spells or techniques that are meant to destroy biological enemies or robotic enemies or something, and you're just kind of guessing as you're going along. Mm -hmm. So. 
but yeah. So that's, yeah. I Bit guess, of trial uh, and error. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, but something you kind of uh, you had alluded to earlier was how awesome the sprites are yeah. in the battle scene. Because they do make it moderately plain for the overall map and the just the overhead views and whatnot. But when it's in battle mode, it's pretty pretty nice on the eyes, for particularly at that time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the game is extremely colorful as well. So you mm-hmm. get lots of vibrant colors, and they really, really come out well in the battles. Mm-hmm. They, especially when you're in some of the more kind of futuristic setting. Mm-hmm. And stuff you can see the dashboards and stuff kind of flickering lights. Sure, lights flickering and stuff. Yeah, it's really really cool. And a lot of the enemies, maybe if they have a shotgun or something, when they shoot you, it's a big giant laser beam comes at you and stuff, and looks really nice. Mm-hmm. I really liked when you're in your vehicles and you have fights. Yeah. Then you're in. It shows the dashboard and yeah. <laughs> like all those different just uh, just different. No, uh, oh, that's where I want to use different. Help me out here. Uh, I don't know what you're getting at exactly. So, well, it's just the different kind of dials. They're not even dials. Though. It's just screens, I guess. Different yeah. kind of screens and everything, and all the, all the st- kooky stuffs going on. And it looks like technology, and it but it looks extremely foreign, which is really yeah. cool because it keeps that kind of fantastical element. So you can be like, oh, you know, the algo system is real. Yeah, I wouldn't expect most computer dashboards to be that sort of light green aqua color. <laughs> so I mean, those just, are really colorful too. But those are kind of pointless battles, too. They never feel important. No, no, no. You're just sitting there mashing a button, and you hope you don't die, basically, because you (laughs) can never upgrade the vehicles to get more hit points or anything. You're just trying to out-duel them, basically, just take them all down. Personally, I'd just run from them. I was just just like, yeah, screw this. We're gone. Leviathan? (laughs) Bye-bye. See you. Sandworm? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cause, yeah, because it's not even not even that it's a difficult. It's just more of a hindrance than anything. It's just basically sitting pushing the button. But if you miss a button push, say you accidentally click run and you don't run away, you're probably going to die because uh, because you have such a low amount of hit points. Yeah, it can be a bit edgy. I don't know. It, it, they they do allow a little bit because the monsters won't seem to miss a lot mm-hmm. when it comes to the vehicle fight, but. It's not fun when you're like, come on, don't get killed by <laughs> yeah. a stupid sand. Yeah. Stupid. And they're not terrible, but they, they just don't feel as good as the regular fights do. Right. So, but yeah, uh, what else would you like to delve into? Well, we, we haven't hit the characters at all, so we should probably do that. That would be a good good idea. <laughs> we, we get a, a pretty substantial roster in this game. There's, um, what, 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... Plus a sort of 11th character. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm <laughs> counting that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, you get a very big range of characters. I mean, seeing as you have a party of 10, it only makes sense that the you would have a, a very large number of characters to choose from. Sort of. <laughs> you don't exactly get to choose all these characters, which is a bit unfortunate. Yes, no. I kind of like how... The, they went about it, and you're progressing from different areas, and some characters come in, and then they'll leave. I, right. I'm a big fan of that when it comes to RPGs. Either have that, or have it be like a group that sticks together throughout the whole thing, mm-hmm. and doesn't really change. I like that kind of party as well. I don't like having here, like, Chrono Cross, here's a bunch of characters, let them all join, here's an alien, here's dogs you yeah, know, guitar uh, player and guitar all player yeah, from, yeah. From, from the beyond but yeah. um, I really kind of enjoy that it, it makes it feel more like an adventure because not everybody is going to be like oh yeah I'll go with you and <laughs> totally risk my neck for whatever the hell you guys are doing yeah so um, I guess start with the main character sure good old Chaz Chaz what do you think of Chaz I like Chaz he starts out very foolish and, and headstrong and kind of just, yeah, whatever, I, I'm no, no problems, no cares in the world kind of thing. And over the course of the game, he he's not fully matured by any means, but he definitely starts to see the world a little bit differently by the end. Right, they definitely make a point of kind of bringing that up uh, yeah. with, with some of the scenes at near the end that he is a little bit, I want to say jaded almost. A little bit. Jaded or at least kind of scarred from mm-hmm. like all of it that goes on because I mean that's that's something that you'd like to see instead of just kind of a very static which seems to happen a lot 
Right. That the main character is very static. They kind of they might go through a change, but then they're kind of back. The change happens, and then they're back to their normal selves, mm-hmm. which is kind of unfortunate. It doesn't seem to. I don't know. It seems to be the case. With there, the there's a bit of that, though. I mean, you do get a bit of that sense of Chaz kind of going back to the way he was, but there still seems to be a bit more sense of a little bit more world weary and traveled. Mm-hmm. Um, not totally, because I mean, what is he? 16 years old or something, right? In the game, right? So he's he can only grow up so much in this short amount of time, so. right? I, yeah, I didn't mind him so much. He kind of fit the bill for what they were going for. I think. Yeah, I think so. So, but nothing really too amazing to kind of put him above some other characters and nothing right. too crappy to really put him below. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> he definitely fits in with what they wanted to fit him into. Right. And, and he fits fine. He's not totally forgettable, but he's not this overpowered, super amazing character that you think is, is going to rule the world or something. <laughs> right, so I guess jumping from Chaz Godin to uh, Alice. Right, his his mentor, his uh, who basically just becomes his partner over time. Okay. Uh, What's her nickname? The Eight Stroke. I or something yeah. like that. I, I just Which remember. Never is explained. It, it, isn't there a bunch of gags about her breast size and her waist size and stuff like throughout all the towns? And stuff? Nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody <laughs> knows exactly what they are, and they're all trying to figure it out or something. Or, something yeah. stupid like that. But no, she's a cool character. She's very um, calm, whereas Chaz is very head forward and trying to always just, you know, guns a blazing and stuff. And she very much knows what she needs to do in every situation. Um, but she, at the same time, she still has this kind of softness and innocence to her, despite being a hunter. I don't know. I don't know if you kind of got that or not, but I, I kind of felt like she she knew more than she let on. Yeah, I, I kind of got that. She. I think she was definitely one with the world and not mm-hmm. kind of like an out of place character. Yeah. She she definitely her interactions with <laughs> with like Han <laughs> are like hilarious. And just some of the things that she says and, and how she interacts with some of the other characters, it made her feel more kind of real than you would say with some other characters in RPGs. Mm-hmm. And she's a strong and, female character. She's a good female character. Right, so it's not like, you know, she's just kind of like, oh, say, me Chaz, or something, right. but I enjoyed her character. I I, I think she, she, yeah, she's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, she's good. She's a really good character. Yes, same. <laughs> well, you're speaking of Han, what, what do you think of Han? <laughs> Han? Um, I don't think there's really that much to say for him. He's not I, bad, but I found him a bit forgettable, I mean. Yeah, he's he, there's really not much to him. He's just kind of uh, he's a student who's about to get married, or he's at least engaged. But, yeah, he's engaged, and and he's just kind of a cog to the to the machine, I guess. He just yeah. he helps kind of make it go. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way of putting it. Let's move on from him then. This is not, <laughs> there really isn't. So <laughs> yeah, there really is. <laughs> After Han, you'd have Grizz. There's not much to say about Chris oh, either. His name is badass, though. And the it's a pretty cool talks. name. Because <laughs> it, it, it kind of makes you think of, like, grizzled yeah. or something. It looks kind of grizzled. He's, he's got this this almost insect-type face, but he kind of re- resembles a bear or, or a raccoon or something as well. Yeah, well, that's because he's race. Yeah, he's a, he's a natural Motavian, isn't he? Yeah. Right. So, But now, I don't mind his character. It's just that... How to put this? Most of the dialogue with him bugs the hell out of me for some reason. Like it's, he seems so stalled. Like Han, at least he has those interactions with Alice, and it's just it's pretty funny. Yeah. And he's just and then after that, you know, he has those little bits about his fiance and stuff. Mm-hmm. Grizz doesn't really have that. Yeah. He turns down doing awesome things, and I know I, I said that was a good thing, but he turns down doing awesome things to be with his sibling, which is cool. Yeah. But he he doesn't even like seem really relieved that they've accomplished what they what he wanted to do for his kind of revenge. It just that is true. Like, he's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. So, yeah. Okay. We did it. I'm going home. Yeah, and seriously, <laughs> it's, it's a line of text, I think. It's just like, okay, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> it's like, going to eat Cheetos. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Mom's bacon cookies. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think. I didn't have his mom, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Uncle, I, or who is it, Grandfather Doran, or whatever the guy's name is. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, he doesn't really. I'm not a big fan of him. I, 
like I don't like his character very much. It's cool that he's in there, but in the same hand, I'm just kind of he's just kind of in there. Like the the break to the machine where yeah. he stops things. I become sad. Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> I, I I really like the look of the character at the least, and the name. I think he they did a good job on that part at, at the very least. Uh, that's probably all the effort they put in. <laughs> Let's make him at least a cool name because he is not going to be worth anything. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> well, moving on from there, let's move on to the one of the two robots or androids that you get, and that is Demi. Um. Well, as I say, you want to you want to kind of start off with that then, or sure. Dem- uh, Demi's the uh, a fairly important role in the game, but she kind of really gets thrown to the wayside very quickly as well. Mm. She's only there to serve one purpose basically and after that and it's too bad because she is a pretty good character but she's just kind of thrown away very easily yeah yeah she she (laughs) that's true she's kind of like um she's She's the damsel in distress basically right and by you know kind of helping her and she's trying to do what she can for her kind of mission and stuff she gets captured yeah she gets captured and then you save her and then after that you take her once you've rescued her and done everything and you take her to where she needs to go and she can't do anything <laughs> she can't do anything <laughs> she's kind of i'll do it again oh yeah. wait i can't do it. her whole point basically is to make the players think okay she is going to do something but she's just the segue to a better android and let's move straight <laughs> into ren who is awesome ren is pretty sweet R- ren's a really good character he's very powerful he serves a lot of function as well because he is an android that can control a lot of the machinery and the tools that are running a lot of the environmental weather patterns and things that are are happening on all these planets. And he also has the ability to access all kinds of spaceships and things like this. He's just, he's probably thousands of years old, right? Well, he's he's, he's 998 or something, right? Yeah, 98. (laughs) Sorry, he's 998 or something. And he's just a really cool character. He, he's very generic in the sense of the way he talks because it's exactly how you would expect an android to talk. But he does have a few funny human-esque type lines in there as well. The, uh, I guess something I, I forgot to mention, this kind of harkens back to the battle system, is that with the androids, you cannot heal them by normal means. Right. Which is pretty cool. I really, really like that. Yeah, that's and very unique. For some people, it might be a little frustrating, but uh, I thought that was really cool. They heal by like walking around on the map or by it's having awesome. <laughs> yeah i mean and and if they do fall in combat they basically spring right back up after where the, after the, the fight the human characters don't you have to use an item or take them somewhere reaver right or whatever whatever they but i mean luckily the androids do have their own recovery uh, abilities which do recover a very large amount of their hit points too right so. So, uh, but and, and does stink when it comes to magic, unfortunately. But that does that's whatever. He can just sit there, take hits, and pound the hell out of you with his bazookas and with his plasma rifle of glory. <laughs> I I actually like his design too. I I kind of I dig the design. Yeah, it's that he cool. has. So he he is pretty awesome. It's a good character. And I like how it's spelled. I'm another fan of the kind of how the the spelling went for that one, where it's like W R E N. All right, why don't we speed it up here a little bit? Um. <laughs> So after that, we have, well, the the next character that would come in line, I'm just going to skip over because I want to get to the character Kira. I wasn't sure what you would think of her. She's sort of the, one of the few magic users in the universe, sort of. There's like a school of magic users, and she's kind of a little bit on the higher end of of magic users. Mm -hmm. An esper is is what they're referred to. Mm -hmm. And she's another character that unfortunately doesn't really get much time in the game because she's actually quite useful and... It would have been nice to get a bit more out of her other than just her being from the magic school, which leads, again, to a story about another character. Yeah, she she doesn't get a lot of, like, I guess, time in front of the camera, but you definitely use her for a long time because she's with you for a few dungeons, and those dungeons mm-hmm. are quite lengthy. <laughs> yeah. Particularly one. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I kind of wish that she would have had a little bit more time, but the time that she did have, um, I wasn't a big fan of her kind of okay. character. It was just kind of, it's just some of the, like, the way, she seemed very juvenile. Mm-hmm. Like, even for the writing, she, like, she, she kind of always like, oh, call me big sister. And it's just like, <laughs> shut 
up and just heal me. Don't don't need this. Just <laughs> you know. But I did like her character. I thought she was pretty pretty helpful. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, so that's cool. What I have to say about Kira. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. So, all right. Well, we have three others. Let's just fire them off quickly. Three, at least for me, three of the better characters, the strongest characters. Uh, we first we have Rika, who is uh, I can never say it, Newman. Yeah, Newman. And she basically looks like if if you play Fantasy Star Two, you're not going to be surprised. But she looks like was that Nay or Knee? And she's just got the pointed ear. She basically looks like a human, but she has a little bit of features. She sort of has a nose like a chipmunk, a little bit. But she's essentially a human, a humanoid with just some different abilities. Very strong character, very useful. I don't know what you think about her, but I I mean I loved having her in the party. She's really really useful. And she's with you. For a very, very, very long uh, time. Almost the whole game, actually. So, yeah, so it, it's quite nice. She, uh, at first, she's extremely helpful because she has very good healing. Yes. And then she kind of, I would say, for the middle part of the game, she kind of, mm, I would say, little plateaus. Yeah. But then near the end of the game, she definitely really has some nice skills that she can use, like the uh, I'll double slash. And, yeah. And... Uh, What's, what's the other one? Uh, where it attacks everybody. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember. Shoot. Yeah, ah! I know what you're talking where about. Where she kind of like fades in and out of existence. Yeah, I keep thinking of illusion, but that's just uh, it's illusion, attack. but with it's it's something else. The I, hell out of yeah, yeah, no, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, she's a really cool character. I love the design too. It's it's nice that it's a callback to a previous game, but with a completely new character and a completely new behavior and, and mm. thought process and everything. So very innocent character. Yeah. Well, she's like one years old or something, right? Well. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Okay. So two la- two last ones. We have uh, Raja the Priest, <laughs> who's from Desolus. And he's basically, a- as he's called by one of the other characters, an old fart. He's pretty he's old, just, though. He's pretty old. He's like 86 85 or, or 86. Or something, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And he's just basically, he's supposed to be the lighter side of the game in a lot of ways. He just cracks really bad jokes. <laughs> Yeah, and he's just he's just there to be the really bad humor. He's a really good healer, though. He's by far the best healer in the game. Great to have in your party. Obviously, as a healer, he's not going to be upfront attacking, but he does have a couple of really good spells. That uh, Saint Fire, which does damage to the, all the things on the screen, and just he's he's a really really useful character. Yeah, see, I I don't like the humor because it's so cheesy, but it's really cheesy. But he is definitely an awesome character to have. And he also is the only one that I can think of where his healing, the heal all skill that he has will actually heal the android. Does it? Yes. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. And also he uh, has, it's like Astiax or something where it will actually recover your kind of your skill, not your skill points, but your tech points. Tech points. Yeah. Right, right. So, which... And- doesn't Which he also really have a spell that gives you uh, healing each turn as well? A regen, yeah, I believe yeah. so. He Very is useful. pretty awesome. He, yeah. <laughs> for as cheesy as he is, he is pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So. All right, why don't we jump straight into the last character, which is Ruin. And he, without, <laughs> sorry for the pun, ruining any of the story, he, uh, he he's very important to, to the story, and he's also... By far the best offensive magic user in the game. He's pretty hardcore. <laughs> yeah, he's he's an excellent uh, fighter when it comes to that. He does take a lot of damage when it comes to physical attacks, as you would expect, and he can die quite easily in in the later section of the game. Early on, he he actually holds his own quite well, but as it gets deeper and deeper into the game, he he died at least for me a lot. He yeah, early on in the game, he is extremely high leveled. Yeah, which is kind of <laughs> what balances it out. But near the end of the game, it feels like he is made out of paper mache. Yeah, but he is. I'm I'm surprised you call him that. I always call him as rune. I guess I don't. Didn't know. I say rune? I thought you said ruin. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> that, well, no, that's yeah, so, so, well, no, I just I didn't know if that's. I think you're right. Ruin, ruin. I think I'm just rune, saying. Oh, rune. Rune. I yeah. think it's just my my poor pronunciation. Come on, sir. <laughs> but anywho, yeah, no, it's just um, he's pretty awesome, and he is. Other than the fact that he is made out of paper, he is probably the best character that you have in the entire game. You think? I would say so. Oh, oh, yeah. You just equip him with two shields to make up for his paper-like 
defense and yeah. just kind of wail on things. Yeah. That's typically what I would do with Raja too, is give him two shields and then uh, have him just stand back and heal or, or throw that fire spell. Out. Right. I, this I mean for offensive purposes. Yeah. Definitely. Rune, Rune is the the one to go with. Raja would definitely be by far the best healer of the lot. So. All right, why don't we, we've spent a fair, fair amount of time on the characters. Why don't you just quickly rank them uh, 1 to 10. I'll say the name and you just give a number. Oh, but we forgot a character. No, I'm not including him. Forget him. <laughs> He's not really on the team, so. <laughs> no love and that, for that, Seth. that could be a bit of a spoil, so. <sighs> no love for Seth. Yes, no love for Seth. Uh, that's okay. All right, okay, throw me Okay, throw so me Chaz. Uh, like, from 1 to 10, so one each to ten. one You're has slow. their own number. Oh, okay, so just kind of rating how they are. Uh, 5 being the average, I would say an, an 8. Oh, okay, I would say 7. I was, uh, gonna say, I was torn between 7 and 8. <laughs> okay. I can never say this name. Alice or Alice? Uh, uh, I would say I would give her maybe a seven. Okay, I'm eight point five. Han? Uh, four. Six. So balance out of five. Grizz? One. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I uh, don't like Grizz at all. Five. <laughs> Ren? Ren, uh, ten. He's Ren, on. ten. Okay. <laughs> Nine. Demi? Six. 6.5. Rika? Uh, I'd say uh, eight and a half, nine. Eight. eight. Uh, Raja? Ten. Really? Ten for Raja? Because he's such a damn good healer. I mean, Despite the humor? <laughs> well, the, well, yeah, I can look past that. If okay. <laughs> I give him a 9.5. Kira? I would say probably a seven and a half. Seven. And Ruin? I'd Ruin. Give him another. Ruin. Jeez. <laughs> I'd give him I a cannot ten. say it. <laughs> Ten. I'll give him uh, another ten. I love, right. I love I, the, the, the R names. <laughs> all right, I'll give him a, a nine. Okay. Cool. All right, why don't we skip ahead, because that, that did take a little longer than I was expecting, actually. <laughs> yeah, I guess, um, is there anything else you want to have? Good. Oh, bullshit. No, there is. Music! <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, but yeah, what, what are your thoughts on the music? Um, I like the music a lot. I found most of it to be quite subtle, and... It's interesting that there's such a, a unique blend of uh, almost that space saga and space opera type theme at the start. It also carries over to a lot of the other parts of the game. But most of the planet themes and stuff are very low-key and not very even noticeable at times. Sometimes you forget that the music's even playing. I think probably my favorite song in the entire game is the uh, Motavia Overworld theme. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite. But I think that it fits the game really well in, in so many various ways. Uh, the boss battle theme is just kind of average to me, but I like the uh, regular battle theme a lot. Same here. I really enjoy the normal battle theme a lot. So, And particularly, I, I like really a lot, I like the, the opening and ending. It's the same song, isn't it? I didn't want to say it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Where's spoilers? Really yeah, I don't think that's I, that big a spoiler. Well, I, th I think it is, just because it kind of, well, it, what it does for it, it really kind of alludes to the whole, it's, it's come full circle, I guess. Yeah. So, and I, well, that's as we, t we said, how this game really ties up the loose ends of the series, so maybe that's a, a good point of, of, uh, of something. <laughs> <laughs> good point to make. The, the thing I do also want to bring up is that I, Really liked how this was on the Mega Drive because of how the music is, mm -hmm. and it really lends itself to the setting a lot more than I think it would have had it been on maybe the Super Nintendo or something, or the Sega CD even. Right, because right. it's got that very uh, I guess I don't want to say uh, what's the word I do want to say. It's got that very uh, I don't want to say stale. What's the word? Well, I it's sort use? of digitized. Digitized is a good word. Very. What is the word I want to use? Uh, uh, English escapes me. But it's it's just so kind of, I guess, futuristic. Yeah. I know it's not exactly the word I want to use, but uh, it's kind of got this very... It's a bit weird to it, but it, it gives it lens to it and adds to the flavor of the whole game. Yeah. So. Yeah, I understand what you're going for there. I think that the limitation of the sound card in the Genesis is a benefit to this game. Mm -hmm. Whereas some other Genesis games, it, it's a big hindrance on them. Well, and that, yeah, that's unless you really like that sort of style of the, the sound and stuff. So. Right, whatever the, it's like a, whatever, M-I-D-I 
format or the, the MIDI MIDI format or whatever it is. So yeah, I guess uh, any other things you want to kind of bring up or? Uh, no, not really. I think uh, this is a very good game that a lot of people are already aware of and have played, but it's it's a game that I think you should revisit if you have played it, uh, unless you've played it really recently. <laughs> revisit this game and just kind of re-experience the magic of Fantasy Star 4. That's definitely good. Uh, I guess I would agree with that. Just be forewarned, uh, going back to it, and if you haven't played it for a very long time, you might get the feeling that I did, which was that the the writing for it was very juvenile. Yeah. But I can look past that. I can definitely look past that, it, but it's very basic. It's not going to leave it, which is nice for, for something of uh, what it's going for, but it's, yes. playing it now, it's just a little bit weird, I guess, <laughs> because yeah. I, I'm almost anticipating a bit more scientific discussion or something a little bit higher up. And you get terrible lines such as, you silly, don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah, are a well, few translation goof, goof ups. <laughs> yeah. uh, one other thing we didn't mention that we both actually encountered was that, uh, that weird uh, menu problem. Remember oh, how? Oh, God, yes. It, it's not a huge problem, but there's just some weird little glitch that uh, often adjusts when you're when you're trying to scroll through to something, and it it always shifts one down by accident for some reason. It's really mm. bizarre. Nearly killed me a couple times. <laughs> well, I, just, I never had that much of a problem with it, well, but yeah, because I would points. want to do the uh, oh, because it also not only can you just do the normal fight and kind of pick everything out, but you can also micro oh, macro them to. Uh, a certain so you can have them okay somebody attack somebody cast a some sort of buff spell somebody do all this stuff so you're not constantly doing it or you can just have them all attack and um well i would do that however sometimes it would have me try to run and i wouldn't be able to escape and <laughs> that would hurt a lot so be careful <laughs> so yeah great woo it's a bit of a wrap on uh, fantasy star 4 play it if you haven't Exactly, definitely. Full show. I think it's a double thumbs up from us. So. Yeah. So nice. uh, I guess we should uh, kind of go into what we started with the last episode. Yes, sir. And that is the Detective Gamer. Right. So uh, did you want to kind of brief, quick intro for those who might not know if they didn't quite listen to the last episode? Or? Sure. Uh, Detective Gamer is a new segment we've added to the portable episodes. And it's just a bit of a game to hopefully get people encouraged to not only listen, but get a bit more involved in our show as well. And we're going to put out a few clues each time we put out one of these episodes. And hopefully you can guess the answer to these clues. And over a certain period of time, if you get three points, so if you can guess three different answers, we uh, have already decided to put a little package together for whoever can get the, the three points and ship it out to you. Just as a bit of a thank you to anyone who listens, and also just again to kind of encourage more people to listen. Exactly, and uh, I guess should kind of point out the uh, just real quick again. It's kind of three clues, and there also be a visual clue to kind of help out. So if you're listening to this, you might want to shift it over to YouTube and search for the clue there. <laughs> sure, but, uh, it's not necessary, <laughs> but it might help. Right, exactly. And also, how we've kind of said it is a time limit of 84 hours, or three <laughs> and a half days, because of time differences and whatnot. I think that makes it a little bit fair. And the first three correct answers are responses. And where do you send these responses to? You send them to bananastand at fastmail.fm. And I'll, also, I'll have the email down in the description. But if those two don't listen to this on YouTube, banana. B A N A N A stand S T A N D all one word at fastmail all one word dot F M. Wonderful. S send your answers there. <laughs> <laughs> and for the last one, so we give the answer. Uh, if you couldn't figure it out, the clues were number one, Konami. Number two, it's an Easter egg in a sports game. Number three, it appeared on the NES, the S S SNES the PS2, and a lot of other systems, and was most recently on WiiWare. And the answer was... You're not going to help me out here? So Is that my cue? <laughs> I, I get... <laughs> All right, the answer was... <laughs> Vic the Vic Viper. Viper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Vic Viper. So, yes, and 
yeah, why don't we get into the new one here? Exactly. So let's go into the next one here. So for this episode, the Detective Gamer, the clues are, number one, an ex-military convict. Number two, has a sleeve tattoo. Number three, is forced to partner up with a member of the opposite sex. There you have it. See if you guys can get that one. I don't think that one should be too terribly hard. I think the first one is a little bit more challenging than that, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll find, out. find out. It shouldn't be, but I'm give me a full thing. No mistakes. Full names. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm very confident that someone can get this one. Yes. So, but yeah, that's. I guess that is it. Uh, anything else you want to add, Sushi? Uh, no. Play Fantasy Star Four. <laughs> Play it. Enjoy it and love Grizz. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> send your love letters to Grizz at hotmail dot com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's really about it. Play Fantasy Star Four. Enjoy it. And if you have played it, tell how much. Tell us how much you loved it and whatnot. So, or hated it if you did not. Or like. hated it. But if you did, I would be very sad. <laughs> but it's all right. So yeah. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a good day. Mm-hmm.